Howdy y'all and welcome back. Today I want to talk about the movie trailers that premiered during the Super Bowl this past weekend. Now there are plenty that I was expecting, but there were also a few that I was a little surprised by. Some of these movies, it was our very first look at them. So we're not going to cover everything, but we're going to cover the few that really stood out to me. And I'm going to go ahead and kick this off with our first look at Wicked, the film adaptation of the famous Broadway play, and a play that I am actually a huge fan of. I had the opportunity to go watch it on Broadway with my grandparents like a decade ago. It's a fantastic show. If you haven't listened to the soundtrack, I highly recommend it. If you haven't seen the show, I highly recommend it. This is a movie that has been in development for several years now. It's taken a long time for it to get up off the ground. At one point, Idina Menzel, or Adele Dazim, was attached to reprise her role as Elphaba, the Wicked Witch of the West. So it's taken a long time. Ultimately, they landed on Cynthia Erivo as the Wicked Witch of the West and Ariana Grande as uh, the Good Witch. I forget her name off the top of my head. And I really liked this first look. It didn't tell us a whole lot. It just served as an announcement of, hey, this movie is being released this Thanksgiving. Go out and see it. Right off the bat, what really stood out to me was this movie looks really good. Like, it literally looks good cinematography-wise. Uh, any movie involving Oz runs the risk of being a CGI fest, and this looks like it has plenty of CGI in it, but it all looks like it works well. Now, I'm sure they have plenty of visual effects to work on between now and the release of the movie, but from what I've seen so far, I like the way that it looks. And I didn't even realize that Michelle Yeoh, the winner of Best Actress for Everything Everywhere All at Once last year, was in this movie as well. It looks like she's going to play an antagonist in it. I haven't seen the play in a while, so I cannot remember who she plays. But I'm going to watch anything that she's in. She's simply one of the best actresses working in the biz today. I don't know about Ariana Grande's acting chops, but we all know she has a fantastic voice. Hopefully she can come out and she can kill it. But she is acting alongside a Academy-nominated, actress in Cynthia Erivo. She was nominated a couple years ago for the Harriet Tubman movie. Uh, she is an excellent actress. I was a little skeptical about her being cast in this because I believe they're supposed to be college age. And Cynthia Erivo is in her mid-30s, I believe. I don't know her age off the top of my head, but she is a little older for the role. Ariana Grande is 30 as well, uh, but she looks really young, so I wasn't really worried about that. Uh, but anyway, the spot looked really good. I'm excited for the movie. Can't wait for us to get a full trailer in the coming months. Next up is a movie that a lot of people did not see coming, and that is Twisters, the long-awaited sequel to the 90s film Twister. I have been this film's number one skeptic since the day it was announced. It seems like one of those movies that, you know, you just released, like, 25, 30 years after the first movie. You try to, you know, catch people in with the nostalgia bait, but I'll be honest, the trailer looked better than what I expected. I thought it gave us a good idea of the tone that they're going for, that they aren't going to try to make this like a gritty sequel or a gritty sort of remake or reboot. This film looks like it knows what it's here to do. It's here to deliver fun, disaster movie sort of action scenes. Hopefully this movie is just a lot of fun, great action, good one-liners. I'm happy to see Glenn Powell continue to get work. Daisy Edgar Jones is in this as well, and she's certainly a talented actress. I was happy to see Anthony Ramos in this too. This movie, low-key has a pretty good cast. I mean, it's a bunch of young people, and people recognize them, but they aren't known for just one role, right? If you were to make that case for anybody, it would be Glenn Powell for Top Gun Maverick, but even then, he wasn't the top billed star in that movie. People know who Daisy Edgar Jones is, but she's not like a huge name. People know Anthony Ramos, but he's not a big name. So I like, I like it whenever big blockbuster movies do this, and they don't just cast a big star, right? They're giving these younger actors an opportunity here. You know, people will recognize them, but they aren't made yet. This movie certainly runs the risk of falling into the trap of many blockbuster movies that were released last summer where, you know, it's a big title, but maybe underperforms critically and then in the box office. I hope that it's not the case. I'm really up for just a fun time in the movie theater, a movie that doesn't take itself too seriously, but is really impressive whenever it comes to its visuals. I just brought up a movie that doesn't have a lot of big name stars, so let's talk about a spot that is hinging on its big stars, The Fall Guy. Now, for me, the jury's still out on this. I really like the filmmaker who's heading this up. I like Ryan Gosling. I like Emily Blunt. I like Aaron Taylor Johnson. It has plenty of talent in the movie. 
but none of the trailers have really hooked me. I know a lot of people are looking forward to this, and I'm in the vast, vast, vast minority here, but this trailer really didn't do anything for me. I have a problem with this spot because it doesn't tell us anything about the movie. It's kind of assuming that you watch the first trailer, and basically all it serves to do is tell you this is going to be funny, it's going to have a lot of action. It has a lot of things in it. You know, they flash a lot of words on the screen in this trailer, and Ryan Gosling is in it. That's basically their selling point. I would have loved to see them try to describe the plot within a 30-second, one-minute spot, but they decided not to do that. For me, that's kind of a red flag whenever you are basically telling us you don't think the plot is a good enough hook there. I understand you have Ryan Gosling in the movie. He's one of the biggest movie stars in the world. You want to put him in the marketing. I totally get that. But people are going to see that Ryan Gosling is in it whenever you describe the plot. So for me, the, the spot was underwhelming. I'm concerned about the movie. I'm definitely going to go see it. Um, but I'm not entirely sold quite yet. And then sort of on that same note, we have a Ryan Reynolds-led project. Not Deadpool 3, but If. And that movie is also being directed by John Krasinski, the director of A Quiet Place. Jim from The Office, you know who John Krasinski is. This movie... I want to like. I hope that it comes out and it's a huge smash hit, a movie that you can bring the kids to. I hope this movie's good. Its trailers haven't really impressed me yet. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but just the CGI with the characters, I can't really get behind quite yet. Hopefully, whenever I go and watch the movie, it's something that, you know, is off-putting there for the first couple of scenes that I see them in, but I can just kind of, like, get into the world, just enjoy the movie for what it is. Uh, but for now, I'm still not totally sold on If. Again, it has a lot of talent in it. Ryan Reynolds is the star. John Krasinski is directing it. I'm curious to see if he can make a big hit that isn't horror-centric, because this is a vastly different movie than what he has directed so far. Uh, or at least on a mass scale what he's directed. So, I really want to like it. The spot didn't really tell us anything that we haven't seen already in its marketing. Fingers crossed that it's a good one. I really hope that it's not one of those that gets like a 50% on Rotten Tomatoes and everyone forgets about overnight. But we'll see. Speaking of John Krasinski, let's talk about a movie that is the continuation of a franchise. He started A Quiet Place Day 1. This trailer, I love. This is the perfect first look. It goes back to the first two movies so we know it's in this world but then it also does a good job of showing us this is day one we have a fantastic actress here Lupita Nyong'o making her return to the horror franchise after her amazing turn in Jordan Peele's Us. I've been very excited for this movie and this trailer has only upped my excitement. It is showing something that is in stark contrast to what we've seen in the first two Quiet Place movies and showing us that destruction of the first day. Yes, we saw that in part two on a smaller scale in that small town, but it looks like we're going to be in San Francisco or New York City. We're going to be in a big city whenever it all pops off, and I just cannot wait. It is going to give us something different than what we've seen in the first two movies here. We're certainly obviously going to have scenes where they have to be quiet. That's the whole shtick with A Quiet Place, but I like that we're getting something new with this, and we're getting some new characters in here. This seems like the best continuation of the franchise, even though it is a prequel. I'm also thrilled to see Jaimon Hansu making his return to the franchise. He was in part two, and no uh, big spoilers, but I don't think we're going to see him in a part three. I really love the fact that they were able to fit in someone from the first two movies here in this prequel and show more of his backstory. It's only going to add to part two, so I'm very excited for that. And then I'm, I'm interested to see what Joseph Quinn can do, because really all I know him from is Stranger Things. He was Eddie Munson in Stranger Things. He is prominent in this trailer. Uh, you know, he's screaming and hollering in the trailer. Uh, he seems to be uh, second to Lupita Nyong'o here. So uh, we're going to see what he's got here. He's got this coming out this year as well as Gladiator 2. So the guy definitely has chops if he is in both of these major movies being released. Hopefully he makes the most of it. I'm excited to see him here. Another trailer I really, really liked was Planet of the Apes. I have been a little bit nervous about this movie because I love the first three films. Uh, you know, Matt Reeves is not coming back and directing this one. We got a new director, and this movie apparently takes place like a thousand years 
after the events of War for the Planet of the Apes. So, you know, no Caesar, no characters that we know. It's all brand new. So I've been very interested. It does seem like not not a reboot, but sort of a soft one where we're going to focus on a new cast of characters in the same world in a new trilogy. It looks like they haven't skipped a beat with this. The visuals all look incredible. The apes look amazing. And it looks like they've completely flipped what the Planet of the Apes franchise is, where now apes are hunting humans. And we have our main protagonist, Ape, who believes that humans are capable of more than what they are now. Because at this point, a thousand years after the apes have taken over, humans are in sort of a feral state. It looks super interesting and gorgeous. Hopefully, the CGI is as good as it was in the past three movies. I, one of my big concerns here is how are they going to boost up the protagonist after a character like Caesar, who I think is one of the best lead characters in a movie franchise, in recent memory. Uh, it does look like we will have a good protagonist here. We don't know a whole lot about him other than he is sympathetic to the humans in this movie, but it seems like they are going to boost him up in part with an excellent antagonist. We have sort of a cult-like leader here for the apes who's really freaky already from the first trailer or the first couple of trailers. Now, I can tell this is going to be a very powerful ape He's going to be very freaky. He's going to have a lot of control over a mass group. This guy looks scary. I think it's going to be a stretch to get people to sign up to basically watch apes for two hours but the last three movies were able to make money. Uh, as long as this movie is up to snuff whenever it comes to the quality, I don't think they'll have a problem getting people in seats. All the marketing for this has gotten me to the point where I am very excited for this movie. I don't believe it was in my top 10 anticipated movies of the year, but if I were to refilm that today, it most certainly would be. But all right, you guys, why don't we go ahead and get into the trailer that everyone's talking about, Deadpool 3, but now known as Deadpool and Wolverine. You guys, this is my third most anticipated movie of the year. This is the trailer that I was most looking forward to on Super Bowl Sunday. And it didn't disappoint. It looks like they are not sacrificing the tone of the first two Deadpool movies just because we're in the Marvel Cinematic Universe now. This looks like it's going to be everything that they pitched that it would be that we are going to get the Deadpool that we know and love. I mean, in the first 30 seconds of the trailer, we got a Disney joke. And apparently the writers said that Disney gave them no notes whenever they made their first draft of the script. So Disney and the MCU are going to let them be Deadpool. Like, this is going to be a true Deadpool 3 film but part of what I love about this trailer is it told us the plot that Deadpool is going into the MCU we got to see sort of the new Mobius played by Tom Wom's games or Matthew McFadden I'm thrilled to see him here I had no idea who was going to be in this movie so imagine my surprise whenever I was watching the trailer and I was like oh my god Tom you're in the MCU now we got to see a little bit from that action set piece from the leaked photos with that 20th century Fox logo in the ground the action looks incredible we didn't get to see Wolverine really we saw maybe the back of his head and then a shadow but you know what I love that it's just a little bit of a tease uh, we're going to get a full trailer here in the next couple months, obviously. The movie comes out this summer. Um, but honestly, I'm just impressed they got a trailer out because they just wrapped filming on this not too long ago. Granted, they had some time during the actor and writer strike to get something together, but still impressive nonetheless. And I'm not surprised that it's been breaking records whenever it comes to trailer views within a 24-hour period because it's been six or seven years since the last movie came out. People are hungry for this character. The last two movies were both great. Ryan Reynolds is maybe at his peak stardom at this point, and everyone's excited to see Wolverine. I'm pumped for this movie, but I'm also super nervous <laughs> for this film because there's so much riding on it, you guys. Imagine if this film just isn't good. I think it's going to be great. There's too many talented people here for it to not be great, but if this film isn't good, it's going to be the disappointment of the year, the decade, whatever you want to say. But fingers crossed that they can deliver on the quality. The first trailer was fantastic. If you haven't watched it yet, definitely go in and watch it if you are a fan of the first two Deadpool movies. But that's everything that I got today, you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. And don't forget to subscribe if you aren't already. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, y'all.